Hey, there we are. The handsome young man next to me. Aww. Hey, my name is Jeremy. Um, we're on Facebook Live. If you're watching this later, that's awesome. I guess we're talking to you right now because nobody's logged in yet. I'm Jeremy. This is my son, Ethan. And uh, we're going to be journeying through John today in Chapter 10. We got a viewer. We got one. Oh, we got two viewers. Hey, how about that? Not only are we live with each other, we're live with people, though. And a heart. Wow. Okay. Seven. Sweet. Awesome. So while we're waiting for some other people to log on here, a uh, question for you, son. So what's okay. your favorite part about being quarantined so far? Hmm. Not that many upsides. Uh, not going <laughs> to lie. Um, I like having all my schoolwork done by like one every day. That's nice. Okay. Awesome. Okay. That's a good thing. What else? What else has been cool? Uh, family time, I guess. <laughs> Family time, that's what I'm saying. Thank you. Yes, family time has been great. It's been cool. I usually travel a lot for work, and we're not doing that right now. So uh, that's pretty neat. Um, and being home every night has been just really, really cool. Some good moments as a family. And this is one of them, honestly, like logging into John every day, journeying through John. That's been super cool. Um, and so while we're waiting for some more people to join, uh, my wife wrote up some questions, and my daughter's going to ask them to us. So uh, here we go. What do you got, kid? Here they are. Number one, what is your favorite Easter candy? Hmm. Feel free to comment, by the way. If you're watching, like, chime in here. I'd love to hear everybody's favorite Easter candy. Uh, mine is, is, uh, is Cadbury mini eggs. Mine is Cadbury mini eggs for sure. Yeah, not the big ones, not the ones you crack open and the stuff comes out, but just, like, the little chocolatey ones with the, with the coating. That's my jam right uh, there. Probably the jelly beans, not the small ones, but, like, the bigger ones. Okay. The small ones are average. No, Small ones are average. Special. Okay, so you're all about the gusto, like one big bite of sweet. More sugar. Ones. More less sugar, effort. less wood. Yeah. Okay, there you go. All right, cool. Uh, what else? Number two is what is the strangest word you know? Strangest word? Hmm. Uh, yeah. Strangest word. Strangest word. Age uh, before PD? Yeah, okay, I got that. <laughs> um, uh, let's see, strangest word. What's the strangest word other people know? Maybe I can steal from somebody just blatantly plagiarize. Uh, soliloquy. I'm going to go with soliloquy is the what? strangest word that I know. Never soliloquy. heard that one. Yeah, look at uh, Caddy Wampus. Is, is that a real word? Uh, yeah, Caddy. Is sure. It, okay. I mean, why not? Yeah, Caddy Wampus. Yeah. Okay. I don't know if you'll find it in the dictionary, but it sounds good to me. Caddy Wampus. Okay. What else? Number three is what would you do with a million dollars? Ooh, that's a fun one. What would you do with a um, million dollars? What would you do with a million dollars? I mean, that's kind, of, mm, 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 kind of boring. What would you do with a million dollars? Uh, I'd try to buy Six Flags, but I probably couldn't. So <laughs> I'd buy dollars. stocks and okay. get money and then buy Six Flags. Oh, brilliant. Long-term planning. <laughs> I like it. I like it. So you don't want to just ride the coasters. Like, you want to own the coasters. Own you want all. to be the owner of People the coaster. pay me to ride the coaster. Okay. Okay. And then you can do it whenever you want. There's no parked hour. She, you own the place. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. All right. Good. I like it. Okay. Uh, I probably would. Uh, I'd pay off the house. I'd pay off the house. I'd, I'd fund your college fund because you've got the right future, young oh, man. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Fund my six flags. What else you got? Um, Marvel. Okay, so here's the rapid fire round. Ooh, rapid Marvel fire round. or DC? Uh, Marvel. 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 Tacos? Well, this is interesting. I wonder if anybody's a DC fan out there. I love the DC. I love the Batman. Uh, no, Marvel. Yes. Go ahead. Next one is tacos or hamburgers. Tacos or ham tacos? Hamburgers. Hamburgers. All right. Free country. Go Next ahead. one is Beatles or Beach Boys? Beach Boys. <sighs> Beatles. Beatles. Transcendent. Beatles. Breakfast or dinner? Breakfast. Breakfast. Breakfast for dinner. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> See what I did there? <laughs> Breakfast for dinner. All right. What's the next one? Chips or popcorn? Uh, chips. Popcorn. Chips or candy? Candy. Chips. What? Whose kid are you? <laughs> <My kids>. Chips. <laughs> Chips. I'm a fan of salty. Yeah, salty's good. Salty's good. Star Wars <clears throat> or Indiana Jones? Star Wars. Uh, trilogy series or series. Harrison Ford series. Interesting. Uh, Star Wars. Star Wars for sure. Good on you. CNN or Fox News? <sighs> Okay, so uh, yeah, we got some people on. Welcome. We're not going to answer that one. Uh, I'm going to circle back. I'm Jeremy. It's a privilege to be journeying through John with you today. We're going to be in chapter 10 today, and I'm here with my son, Ethan. It's super awesome that we get to do this. Thanks for everybody that's tuned in on, uh, on Facebook Live. Super cool. I see comments. I can't see them from where I'm at, but awesome that uh, 
that's okay. Leave it alone. Anyway, so we got comments popping up. That's really cool. Thanks for interacting. There are going to be staff members on here. So if you have a question about something we talk about today, something you don't feel like I covered well or covered um, accurately, uh, feel free to engage the staff and they'll be online to answer questions. It's going to be super cool to look back at this later and check out all the comments. So again, thanks for joining us. Really, really cool. Um, so we're going to be in chapter 10 today. So uh, let's paint a picture here. Chapter 10, um, who's Jesus talking to in chapter 10? Pharisees, right? Yeah. Yeah. Adding Jesus on to is end of chapter 9. Correct. It's a continuation story, right? That actually starts several chapters ago. So this is a continuation. But to go forward, we kind of have to go back. So uh, would you mind reading like the end of chapter 9 here, starting verse 40? Yeah. Some Pharisees who were with him heard him say this and asked, What are we blind to? Jesus said, If you were blind, you would not be guilty of sin. But now that you claim you can see, your guilt remains. Your guilt remains. Okay, so we're going to title this, uh, for Drew's sake, we're going to title this a continuation of controversial conversations because we had to cube something. So this is, that's, that's a lot of C's, C cubed. Um, okay, so right, this is a continuation of controversial conversations. So Jesus is talking to the Pharisees here <clears throat> and doing what kind of only Jesus can in a righteous and holy way. Um, again, painting the picture a little bit, he's just, he's just healed a man, given him sight for the first time in his life. He's never been able to see before. And, and then the religious leaders are questioning, they're saying, so, so on whose authority are you doing this? Whose power are you doing this under? And he, he says it's through the Father, right? But they don't necessarily believe him. So as we continue this story, um, Jesus is talking in verse 1 through 5, and he says, uh, I'm going to read it. It says, I tell you the truth, the man who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs him by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The man who enters by the gate is the shepherd of his sheep. The watchman opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he's brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them. And the sheep follow him because they know his voice, but they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they'll run away from him because they don't recognize a stranger's voice. So who, uh, who is Jesus in this story? Shepherd, right? Yeah, Jesus. shepherd. So, so chapter 10 is really kind of full of, of imagery, right? And it's this metaphor. It's a continuing metaphor. And at first, it, it, it seems repetitive, right? But as you look a little closer, like we're going to do, it's actually a progression. It's a progression of a metaphor, and it gets more intimate. It gets more relational. It gets more personal as it goes. It gets a little more confrontational as it goes. So Jesus is the shepherd here. You're absolutely right. So he's telling the Pharisees, I'm the shepherd. Um, I'm, I'm the legitimate shepherd. I come in through the gate. Um, he's saying, the sheep know me. I know them. I call them by name, and the sheep know me, and they respond to me, and they follow my voice. And that's really cool, right? Seems yeah. relatively simple. But the Pharisees, they don't quite get it, right? And Jesus, recognizing that they don't, he goes on. And he says what? Will you read the verse 1 of chapter 7? Or, I'm sorry, chapter 10, verse 7, that's yeah. just the first. Uh, therefore, Jesus said again, I tell you the truth, I am the gate for the sheep. Okay, so wait a minute. Okay, so Jesus is the shepherd. He just said he's the shepherd. So do you think that Jesus is confused? Do you think maybe he's like, oh, I forgot that I just told him I was a shepherd? I mean, he's all-knowing, so it's hard to be confused. But Very difficult for no. an all-knowing being to be confused. Yeah, so so now he's the gate, right? So this is this is a beautiful picture to me. This is some more of that imagery. So so the gate represents, I'm the gate through which the sheep come. So the, the pasture is what? The pasture is a safe place. The pasture is a providential place. The yeah. pasture is the where, where it's security and it's safety, right? But there's also mm -hmm. something else here. Jesus is saying, I'm the gate to the pasture. I'm the gate to the Father. I'm the gateway to the Father. Okay, so Jesus is the shepherd. Yes. Yes. Jesus is the gate. Yes. Yes, Jesus is the shepherd and the gate. Okay, so let's continue on. And as we do, it gets even more personal. It becomes more relational. And this is super cool. So um, verse 11, Jesus says, I'm the good shepherd. I'm not just the shepherd. I'm the good shepherd. And I lay down my life for my sheep. Like, wow, that's awesome, right? He lays down his life for his sheep. So, so. Um, contrast that, right? It goes on for the next several verses and it talks about the hired hand and the hired hand is going to come and, and he'll watch the sheep for a while. But what does he do? At the first sign of trouble, he, he, runs, he runs away. away yeah. right? He leaves the sheep on their own because he doesn't have any <laughs> genuine care for the sheep, right? So contrast that to the good shepherd who lays down his life for his sheep. Like, who are the sheep? Us. We're the sheep. Yeah, we're the sheep. Believers of Jesus are the sheep. We know his voice and he calls us by name. So it's really cool. Um, now, at this point, I got to give the Pharisees just a just I got to hit pause and interject Jeremy's thoughts. So I don't think um, right now if they're lost on the shepherd imagery, he's talking about laying down his life. He's talking about gates. He's talking about hired hands like these people have to be like this boy is way out of our realm. Uh, and I don't think they quite know what he's talking about. So what is their reaction to that? 
Oh, I'm sorry. Let me back up a little bit. We'll come to that in a minute. So verse 16, verse 16 is interesting. It's, it's, um, so he's talked about the sheep laying down his life, the good shepherd. Um, and he says, there are others in the flock. There are other sheep that are not of this flock, in fact, but they are called. They recognize my name. Who do you think he's talking about there? Uh, verse 16, the other sheep, not of this flock. Well, so the regular flock is the Jews, so probably the Gentiles, so us. Kid is smart, wicked smart. So uh, yeah, he's talking about the Gentiles. He's talking about those that not, have not yet heard the message, right? So it's some foreshadowing there. And he continues on with the foreshadowing. He's talking about the Gentiles now. And then in verse 17, he says, um, the good shepherd lays down his life only to take it up again. And then in verse 18, he says, he says, nobody's taking my life from me. Nobody takes it from me. I willingly lay down my life for my sheep, right? So contrast that again to the hired hand that just takes up. So I willingly, I joyfully lay down my life for my sheep. And by the Father's authority, I take it up again. I mean, it's beautiful. So again, now, okay, so at the end of this, now the Pharisees kind of have to be looking at each other like, what on earth is this boy talking about? And they react out. What do they say? 19, verse 19. At these words, the Jews were again divided. Many of them said, he is demon-possessed and raving mad. Why listen to <laughs> okay, him? Wait, wait, so he's demon-possessed and he's raving mad. And then other people say, well, I mean, we may not understand exactly what he's saying, but these aren't the ramblings of a mad yeah. Right. So it's kind of a mixed message that he's getting there. Right. Or mixed reaction. So we're going to we're going to hang out here for a minute. So, you know, this is like this is super encouraging to me. This is one of our takeaways from the day. Um, this is awesome. Like here you have Jesus. You have literally God's son, Jesus, like like the Jesus. And he's talking to people. He talks to crowds of people. But throughout this whole throughout the whole book of John and you see it throughout the New Testament. So a lot of people that he talks to, they don't believe. Right? They don't believe. They've seen, especially this crowd right here, he said who he is. He's described who he is. He showed them who he is. He's performed miracles in the Father's name, and they still don't believe. So sometimes we get really discouraged when we've got somebody that we are trying to make a disciple of. Like We desperately want them to know the joy and the peace that comes from our relationship with the Father, but we don't see that relationship moving forward. And it's a little bit disheartening. Right? It's a little bit disheartening. But again, give yourself some grace. Even Jesus did not convince everybody with his words and his miracles. Okay, so pin that thought for just a minute. We're gonna come back to that. Um, but as we continue on in the text, so we, we shift gears a little bit, and now we're at the Feast of Dedication, okay? So transparency, I did not know what the Feast of the Dedication was, <laughs> but I do see in the text here that it says it was winter. Okay, so that gives me pause. So then I looked into it a little bit. I read some commentary about this. So the Feast of the Dedication takes place in the winter. Now, we've been in what? What is, the, what is this framed in? you got to go back to Chapter 7 kind of to figure out where this, uh, where this piece is framed. So, Feast of Booths, right? Feast of Booths, which is what? Which is Sukkot, which is what? Yeah. The Feast of the Tabernacles, which is what? We just went through that. Seven, like, how yeah. awesome is that? So during Sin Week, we just got to experience some of this, which is super cool. But we know it takes place in the fall, September, October, and this is winter time now. So as I look, this is interesting. This is Hanukkah. This is the Hanukkah season for them. So Jesus is in the colonnade. He's in Solomon's colonnade, colonnade walking around the temple. And uh, as he's literally surrounded, he's surrounded by these Pharisees. And they're yeah. saying what? They're saying, so who are you? Who is it that you are? And he's like, he uses the sheep thing again. He's like, well, you don't know because you don't want to hear. You don't recognize my voice because you're not my sheep. Right? Yeah. You're not my sheep. But, but again, using this imagery and getting a little more direct and a little more forceful, he even says, um, you don't believe the miracles I do in my father's name. You don't believe me because you're not my sheep. I know them and they follow me and I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. Why can't they snatch them out of his hand? Because it's by the father's authority that they stay in his clutch and his love and his provision. Right. But then he, he closes it with some fighting words. But he says, I and the Father are one. Now, for the Pharisees, this is blasphemy. This yeah. is heretical. This is, this is inexcusable. So they what? They move to stone him, right? <laughs> they want to kill him. That's, their first, that's the first time they really would just, they wanted this boy out because um, he's spreading more harm than good. So Jesus kind of launches into a little bit of a, a, a definition or defense of himself and why he has the authority to say what he said. But I kind of want to skip ahead to the end of the chapter. So we're going to go ahead to verse uh, 39. And we're going to kind of skip ahead to the end. Um, and Jesus says again, again, they tried to seize him, but he escaped their grasp. Then Jesus went back across the Jordan to the place where John had been baptizing in the early days. Now, who's John here? Which John is he talking John about? The, the author of the book? Baptist. Yeah, John the Baptist. John the Baptist. You're absolutely right. So he went back to the place where John had been baptizing in the early days. Here he stayed 
and many more people came to join him. They said, though John never performed a miraculous sign, all that John has said about this man was true. And in that place, many believed in Jesus. That's beautiful. Like, that's awesome. And actually, to give a little context here, like, he goes back to where his ministry really began, right? Where John baptized him, and the dove descended and landed on his shoulder, and the, and the, the skies opened up. Um, and it's, it's awesome that he's going back here, but he's going back here in preparation for a trek to Jerusalem, which is what? Ultimately, where he's crucified, crucified yeah. right? So he went back to where it all started, and many believed in him there. But the point I want to make is what I started to talk about a little bit earlier. So, to me, this is where this is where uh, this is fulfillment. Okay, so John the Baptist, um, he he's the one that baptized Jesus, right? His whole yeah. life was about one thing. It was about what? What was John the Baptist's entire purpose about? Paving the road for Jesus, like telling people about he's coming. Absolutely. Look at this guy. He's so stinking smart. So that's exactly what John's life was about. His whole life, his ministry, everything that he was about was about that. Now, John, John's a weird dude, right? Like John's a little unusual. John lives in the desert, first of all, isolationist. That's weird. And then uh, what did he eat? You know what he ate? Well, talks about right. it in Matthew chapter honey. 11. Yeah, locusts and honey. He ate locusts and honey. Yeah, strange diet. Not sure if that's high in fiber or not. <laughs> um, and then what did he wear? What did he wear? Camel. Well, he didn't wear camel. He wore, he wore clothes camel. made out of camel hair, it's like right? Camel, yeah. So dude does not have good taste. I mean, that's itchy. That's not comfortable at all. But the point is about John is that his whole life was about one thing. It was about pointing to the Messiah, right? But after Jesus was baptized and began his ministry and called his disciples, John the Baptist didn't follow him. He didn't become one of his disciples. He stayed behind, and his ministry shrunk and got smaller, and ultimately he gets thrown in prison, right? So even though he'd seen Jesus and he knew that he was able, that he recognized him whose sandals I'm not worthy to carry, he had recognition, but he didn't get to see the fulfillment of that. So going back to what we were talking about just a minute ago, like there's times in your life that you're pouring into people, you're speaking truth to them, you're showing them the joy and the peace, the transcendent peace, which transcends understanding, but you're not seeing anything happen in their life. Now, poor John, like he's in jail, right? And he sends, he sends his helpers to go find Jesus and say, are you the one that we were expecting? got to see it right so that's my big takeaway from today like i love this imagery i love how jesus engages the people but what i really love is that sometimes we don't get to know the impact that we're making love that absolutely love it so anyway we're gonna close there um i do want to thank everybody for joining us like this has been yeah. super cool like i've never done anything like this before so this has been awesome and uh, there's a ton of comments i'm looking forward to reading later and uh, really, really cool. And if you're watching later, I'm sorry you couldn't join us live, but this will be posted on the website. And speaking of the website, um, it's a great resource right now, uh, vintagegrace.org. Uh, we have a lot of links on there, links to kids' ministries that are continuing on, obviously through technolo technology and not, um, not live stuff, but there's, there's kids' ministries happening there. There's also a tremendous amount of care that you can find through our church right now. So speaking on behalf of the church, like we are really blessed right now. We're so blessed because we have so many healthy people, people that are stocked up, people that are saved up, people that are rested up, people that, uh, that are totally healthy and they want to help people. And we have more people volunteering to help than we have people asking for help, which, praise God, that's awesome. But if you're one of those people that's been a little bit shy or reticent to, to, go, to the, go to the church and ask for anything, you can email the church, care at vintagegrace.org, and uh, somebody's going to respond to that email. And we, we really want to bless you at a time. If there's anything you need, whether it's a grocery run or, or a medication run, a prescription pickup or anything, just prayer. Um, there's a lot of people that are apprehensive right now. So anyway, uh, those resources are available. We're going to be back in John on Monday. We take the weekend off. And on Monday, we're going to be in John chapter 11. There are 21 chapters in John. So that means we've got how many days left? 11. I haven't slipped at all. <laughs> all right. So we got 11 more in John. So before we part ways here, I want to close this in prayer. Um, and you want to start us off? Yeah, sure. It. Okay, go ahead. Uh, dear God, thank you for this day. Thank you that we were able to come together as a church. And even though we don't know what's going on with the corona, thank you that you do. And that you have a plan through all of this. Uh, help us to be lights to people around us who maybe are scared or worried or don't know what's coming. And help us to lead them to you so that they can have the peace that we have in following you. Lord, we, uh, we're humbled. God, we're humbled and we're so grateful that we have your word and that no matter how many times we read a passage of scripture, if we take the time to really pour over it, we can take something new away from it, God. Your word is living and it's active and it's life-changing. 
God, I just thank you for all these people that are joining us today, people that are endeavoring to get to know you more when they have a little bit of downtime. Lord, I ask that you would bless that. And Lord, that people would be emboldened just to be just to be your hands and feet and your light and your hope, Lord, that they would be a light to people that desperately need it right now. And ultimately, God, that we as your saints would point people to you, Lord, that they would know your son, that they would fall in love with him. God, we just pray that you would bless the rest of this day, bless everybody who tuned in, bless the people that watch later, Lord. Let this be a resource and an encouragement for people. And God, bless the weekend ahead. We thank you and we love you. All right, folks, we're going to sign off. So thanks again for joining us. This was this was a genuine privilege. Uh, again, Ethan, Jeremy, dynamic duo. All right, talk to you later. Bye.